the Business Advisory Implementation Development Service. The Bates program is a major step forward. A game changer for the Black business community. Designed specifically for Black entrepreneurs, by Black entrepreneurs. Bates provides expert help to Black businesses. It addresses the most important barriers to Black success. Entrepreneurs need four things to be successful. Access to capital, to network, mentors and sponsors, access to processes. Une façon de travailler avec les entrepreneurs pour vraiment les amener à optimiser et maximiser leur projet entrepreneurial. We're going to sit with you and we're going to wrap you around the best experts we have. Cash Pro will help black business owners get access to more payroll resources. Anybody that needs to get more funds to amplify their business, ACBN, we do grant writing sessions. The support, it's tremendous. I have a lot to learn and I feel as though I'm, I'm in good hands. I'm really looking forward to all that we're going to be able to accomplish together. Please check out bbpa.org forward slash bay Land Acknowledgement As we gather together, we acknowledge the sacred land on which we reside. It has been a site of human activity for 15,000 years. This land is the territory of the Huron-Wendat and Petun First Nations, the Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. The territory was the subject of Dish with One Spoon Wampoon Belt Covenant, an agreement between the Iroquois Confederacy and Confederacy of the Ojibwe and allied nations to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. Today, this gathering place is still the home of many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work in the community on this territory. We are also mindful of broken covenants and the need to strive to make right with all our relations. Last but certainly not least, we acknowledge the people of African descent who were brought here against their own will or in search of a safe place to live their lives and raise their children. Reconnaissance des terres. En nous rassemblant, nous reconnaissons la terre sacrée sur laquelle nous résidons. C'est un site d'activité humaine depuis 15 000 ans. Cette terre est le territoire des Premières Nations Huron, Wandat et Petun, les Séniques et plus récemment les Mississauga de la, Crédit, de la rivière Crédit. Le territoire était sujet de l'alliance de la ceinture Wampun plat avec cuillère, une accord entre la Confédération Iroquois et Confédération des Ojibwe et des Nations alliées à partager et à prendre soin pacifiquement pour les ressources autour des Grands Lacs. Aujourd'hui, ce lieu de rassemblement est toujours le foyer de nombreux peuples autochtones de toute l'île de la Tortue et nous sommes reconnaissants d'avoir la possibilité de travailler dans la communauté sur ce territoire. Nous sommes également conscients des alliances brisées et de la nécessité de nous efforcer de guérir toutes nos relations. Dernier point, mais non le moindre, nous remercions les personnes d'ascendance africaine qui ont été amenées ici contre leur volonté ou à la recherche d'un endroit sûr où vivre leur vie et élever leurs enfants. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bays. We're so happy that you're here joining us today. As always, I'm going to get right into it. I know y'all come here for our special guest today, Ryan Knight. So before I hand it over, let me tell you a little information about our special guest. Ryan Knight has built multiple businesses over the last 10 years and spends a great deal of his time leading and mentoring young entrepreneurs in the community. After starting a social enterprise, Detailing Knights, a mobile waterless car cleaning company, Ryan was able to launch his first youth entrepreneurship program called Knighthood Academy. Ryan has a deep passion for his community Ryan is an active board member with the Peel Learning Foundation. He is the co-founder of the Afro-Caribbean Business Network Foundation and leads Ontario's first Black-led microloan fund. Ryan has been named one of Brampton's top 
40 Under 40, and twice nominated for a Business Excellent Award by the Brampton Board of Trade in 2014, and he won in 2019. In 2013, Ryan won the Emerging Entrepreneur of the Year Award from the Toronto Region Board of Trade. Knight is a current contributor on CFRB News Talk 1010, appear, appearing each Monday morning with host John, Jerry Ager to address current affairs from an African and Caribbean, Caribbean heritage business owner perspective. Ryan is an avid community advocate. He is an avid community advocate and devoted family man, married to Sheraton, and they have two wonderful children, Jasmine and Christian. And now I'm going to hand it over to you, Ryan. Done. Much, much appreciated. Uh, thank you for uh, letting people know about who I am, but. It's more about you that is on the call. You are here because you want to get the money and the money is out there. So I am uh, tasked to teach you how to position yourself in front of the flow of this money. And let me know if it has a bit of a delay or if it's coming through okay. I will begin to share my screen. But just as I'm sharing my screen in the chat, if you're able to put in, if you're running a for-profit or a non-profit, you could just say for profit now. Actually, if you'd want to put in the actual name of your organization, that'd be great too. Would love to capture it so we can follow up if you have any specific questions about your org. Just so you know, today will be focused on for profits. So if you're here for nonprofit, you will get value, but it will be a bit skewed to our uh, for-profit opportunities. All right. Let me check. Everybody is here from nonprofit. We might have to switch. So give me a sec. Oh, one sec. What's the chat look like so far? Yeah, so we have for-profit, for yes. Some non both. Mm -hmm. I'm good to both. Have, good job, Brian. I like that both. All right, excellent. Okay. So you are in the right place. Because I know um when I was running my company, well, I'm still running it, but detailing nights, it was really difficult to find uh grants that were specific to uh for profit organizations, but a lot of that has changed now. So let me begin to share. And again, I am here representing Empowered for X and the Afro-Caribbean Business Network. And the presentation today is going to be about find funding and grant opportunities. Uh, we're going to skew it to for-profit uh, entities, but we will touch on a bit of nonprofit opportunities as well. Again, I'm a serial entrepreneur, currently running three companies and was a co-founder of the nonprofit ACBN. But I really like to spend my time working with entrepreneurs, especially those that have a social impact lens to what they do. It's not just about making money, but also impacting the community in a positive way. That is actually considered a social enterprise. And you'll hear me say social enterprise a lot because that is where a lot of the funding that is coming from the governments or even from corporations, they're trying to steer it towards social enterprises. So if you're a company right now that hasn't really thought about how to make that social impact, you're, I'm going to convince you why it's so important today. And a little bit about Empowered for X. So it started as a co-working space here in Brampton. I'm actually in the space now. So, oh shoot, the lights are off. So I'll show you. I don't know how much you can see it in the, but it, I apologize that it's dark. But if you need a professional business address, we actually have a $10 per month virtual office space address for you. So don't get people showing up to your house and saying that they saw your address online. You can use our Rutherford address as your business address. And with COVID, we shifted a lot of our support to virtual. So we created the boot camps and the accelerators to really help to get you investment ready. So if you're looking for any type of capital, we're able to position you with the best footing. 
And I did want to quickly touch on our partners that have supported ACBN and Empowered for X up to this point, including Alterna Savings and Sheridan's EDGE program, which stands for the Entrepreneurship Discovery and Growth Engine, uh, Calabash, that is a new cooperative that is supporting black focus expert service providers. So if you have a service that nonprofits or for-profits can use, please get in touch with Calabash. I think the email is hello at calabash.com. Actually, let me put that in the chat. Well, I'll put it in the chat after. So if you're a service provider that has services that other entrepreneurs and nonprofits can use, definitely reach out to the team at Calabash. Also one of the directors for SETSI, which stands for the Social Economy Through Social Inclusion. A shout out to the team there. Uh, ZSC helps us a lot with our like business development for our entrepreneurs, uh, managing and assessing what stage they're in and then figuring out the best next step for them to hit their milestones. And a big shout out to the Toronto Com Community Benefits Network. Rosemary Powell was a supporter from before day one when uh, Detailing Nights was just getting its footing. We were actually the entrepreneur in residence at Skills for Change when Rosemary was working there. That's when we first met and we've been able to keep a strong relationship ever since, and she's been a great supporter. So a little bit about ACBN. It was started as a, kind of as a, an idea to become an entity that works with entrepreneurs to help them scale their companies. So right now, if you did an audit of your business, you'd wanna figure out what stage are you at right now and what would it take to exponentially grow your company? So we work with entrepreneurs to create that blueprint in order to scale up their companies and then to get them investment ready. And again, with our partners in Powered4X and the like. So the pillars that we love to stand on is of course, entrepreneurship. I believe that everybody should have a piece of entrepreneurship in their life, especially with our youth program. We tell them it's the best time to start a business because you have you're still living at home and you have this safety net so you can really test a lot of ideas but even for entrepreneurs that are older and even if you have a job you should still think about having a side hustle because it really does change your dynamics tax wise that you could talk to michael pinnock about the advantages of having a business but having control of additional revenue that's coming into your household entrepreneurship can give you that leg up and of course economic inclusion I believe entrepreneurship is that equalizer. I remember starting Detailing Nights with a $250 loan from my dad and my father-in-law showing me the different uh, products to use and really going door to door and building it up to where it is today started from, I would say close to zero. And a lot of us now, especially today, have a lot more resources that you can tap into, which is gonna be the focus of today where is that money that you can use to really catapult your business? And of course, convening. I love being able to meet, uh, even if it's virtual, but of course, in person, we used to do networking events and virtual. We do a lot of workshops and seminars. Actually, we do a Grant Hunter webinar every other Wednesday. So next Wednesday at one o'clock. Every other week, we just look at what grants are out there and go through the entire application so today you're gonna to get a sneak peek on what actually we go through with our clients too. But the big piece, pillar number four, access to funding. Uh, as mentioned in the bio, I'm one of the uh, general partners for the ACBN microloan program. So we're able to loan up to $2,500 for entrepreneurs. It usually helps them get additional inventory or put more fuel into their marketing. So getting into like paid ads and creating a marketing strategy to really boost up sales. So if you're interested, but I always say, look at the free money first. So BBPA has their base program. We typically send clients there after they do our assessment to see what services for your business you can get done with their grants. And then if you need uh, specific things, the loan is always there. So I touch on our funding track record just to show you that it's possible because for-profit companies up to this point typically struggle getting money. And that's where we try to do as many seminars as we can to break through that myth that for-profit companies cannot get grants. And again, I saw Brian put that he has both a for-profit and a non-profit. And that mix, I believe, is what will open you up to 
all the opportunities that are available. Because you'll see here, there's certain things like pitch competitions where Ignite Capital, we were able to get 5,000, but the Youth Opportunities Fund is uh, for nonprofits and grassroots organizations. So you wanna be able to shift what you do to match what different funders are looking for. Again, you'll see the city of Brampton is there. The Youth Opportunities Fund is actually provincial. So we've gotten grants from municipal, which is city, uh, provincial, and federal. And all that to say it's possible. But what I'm most proud of is being able to help others get their grants. So with the Investment Readiness Program, which we are going to touch on later today, we were able to support two organizations, one for-profit, Custodia's for-profit, and they were able to get up to 100, well, they got the full 100,000. And Rescue Youth International is what I'm more proud of because they were a nonprofit that does great work working with youth that are dealing with the education system and the justice system, but they didn't have a lot of bandwidth to go out and be writing grants and researching grants and what's out there. So we were able to work with them to say, hey, we will do the research for you. We found the investment readiness program. We were able to write the grant and they were successful. And now we put in a social enterprise concept. So this social enterprise concept allows them to generate profits that is going to sustain the nonprofit. And again, it's a case study work in progress, so we shall see. They actually, I believe, launched the food truck. It's a food truck that they um, put in for. I believe it was on Sunday, but I have to check to see exactly when the official launch will be. So please support. Let them know that the community has their back. All right. All that to say, let's dig into what does it take to write a solid grant application. So we're gonna work on this grant. All right, so let me come out here. And again, if there's any questions at this point, please let me know. We are gonna touch on the available grants, but I wanna walk you through what we typically help clients create. And we this the grant writing blueprint. So let me put this in the chat so that you can follow along. All right, and while this is loading, the reason that the blueprint is so important is because a lot of grants that you're going to be writing, and especially the ones I'm going to tell you about today, once you've written the first one, you'll notice that they ask a lot of the same questions. So you want to have that information all in one place that you can access it quickly. So here, I'll put it into the chat. So you could either follow along. And I do see a quick question from Shem. Do we help with business plans? Yes, so empower for x does have a business plan support division. So we do need help with the business plan specifically. Reach out and we can help you with that. And also with writing your grants, we can also help with that. But again, tap into the BBPA BAIDS program because you can get the grant from uh, BAIDS to be able to pay for those services. So getting your business plan done and even grant writing, you can tap into it. So you'll see, you're gonna have homework right on this call, but jump into this template, create a copy of it because this is the one that I usually edit. So if you don't make a copy of it, whatever you put in, it, it'll edit it. So I actually delete it. So you'll see in the file section, just go to make a copy and then rename it how you like. All right, so part one, your organization. This should be the easiest part. You should know these answers off the top of your head. But like I said, usually when we're writing a grant, we start from scratch. So we're always pulling things from the top of our heads. Instead, put information into this document and then you're just copy and pasting back and forth. All right, so you'll see it asks for your legal name, which is what you incorporate it as. If it's your operating name, let's say we incorporate it as Service Kingdom, but we operate as Detailing Knights, then your operating name would be uh, what you put in question two. Put your business number here. So that's not the same as your incorporation number. Your business number is nine digits. You'll see the example here. And typically it's RC0001 for your corporation. And if it's a HST number, it's RT. If it's a payroll number, it's RP. 
but the business number that they usually ask for is the nine digits ahead of it. You can mark off what type of organization you have, uh, the category. So here you can break it down even more. That's more for nonprofits to see like what you focus on. So it gives you a bit of examples here. The year that you're established and your address, it does ask for your mailing address. So for us, our head office is in Mississauga at Mill Creek, but our mailing address is here in Brampton at the Empowered for X Corkin space. So you put both of those in, the telephone number. Now the main piece that you're gonna see asked in every single grant application is either to, uh, give us your elevator pitch or give a hundred words to explain what your business is or what your organization does. So having that written saves you a lot of time. So this is where you can always come back to it and say, hey, just beef it up. You know, like always edit it. Don't feel like whatever you put here in your blueprint has to stay. If you figure out better ways to uh, explain what you do, put it here in question 22. So your organization's mandate, so you could talk about your main activities. So pretty much what your business does and touch on your mission and objectives. So that's where I get to, if you're a for-profit company and you haven't thought of what is your mission or what objectives do you have to support the community, this is a good place to start brainstorming, bring your team in and figure out uh, what you could be doing more in the community. Because when you go for grants, that question is gonna come up almost 100% of the time. All right, so again, your contact, oh, this should be bolded. All right, for those that copied it, I forgot to bold that. All right, so your main contact, you can put two contacts, so secondary contact. And again, it's great to just have this down because you don't wanna be calling people just to ask for their, uh, their number if you forgot your secondary contact. And a big piece is your social media channels. So you, I think there was a, another section you could put website, but you could probably put website here too. So website and social media channels. Oh, and this should be above. This is 37. Perfect. Okay. And then email address. So now we're going to touch on your organizational capacity. So touching on how many employees do you have? And I know it says like organization, but you can just use it for your business. So how many uh, employees do you have for your business? What type of uh, important transformations have you had in the last two years? And that could be milestones as well. So different achievements for your uh, company. And then this piece is usually what differentiates you from your competition. So typically grant applications or the grant program is competitive. So you're going up against other people. It's usually they can't fund everybody. So describing the experience that your organization or your business has in order to show that you're the best choice to execute the program. That's where you want to have, this is where I said like what your organization does, what your business does and what makes you different and what experience do you have? You want to be able to brainstorm these things without the pressure of like a deadline. So usually when you find out about a grant, it's like last minute. So you're trying to put things together and you're starting from scratch. If you have this blueprint, you can now just go to the blueprint copy and paste it over because you've already took time, especially if you have a team, sit down with your team and figure out, hey, let's brag about ourselves because this is the question to really brag and the bio like that was, written, that was um, said earlier about myself, those are things that I would put right into this section. So talking about uh, your own uh, milestones, your own experience, the organization's experience and achievements, put them all in here. And again, for your blueprint, you have no word count. So don't limit yourself. But then for the application, you might need to trim it, but at least you have all the information outlined. 
And so here you might want to do part two multiple times because different grants would have different types of projects. But for your blueprint, you want to pick the project that you are best at. So for us with Detailing Nights, we have this youth entrepreneurship program where during the summer, we teach high school and college students how to run uh, a mini business, like a mini version of our company. So they do mobile car cleaning and they use our products to get it done. So now that type of project, I would explain all in this project section to say what it is that we do, how many youth are we trying to impact, really get it out of our heads and onto paper. And that way, when you're going for a grant, you can explain exactly the impact that you have in the community and the project that you want to do. But if there's a lot of times, this is where people get stuck because it's difficult to explain the project in depth and again, under a deadline. So you want to be able to do that at the time, the description of it, uh, what else, like the activities that you're going to be doing. And it gives a lot of examples here. So you can pull from the examples. It's really key to understand the expected results that you want to see from the program that you're running. So for us, it's more, um, let's say, high school students becoming entrepreneurs, increasing their revenue, uh, like their earning power in those summer months, uh, getting more youth into post-secondary school, because a lot of the participants, they're going through our program in order to earn money to be able to pay for school. So that would be an expected result that we're looking for. So you could use that. And ex again, it'll take time to brainstorm. And a lot of times it takes serving uh, people that you've already helped to see what are the results that they got, because those are the things that you can now put into your application. All right. So these pieces, yeah. So more for nonprofit, does the project fit with your organization's mandate? But even for your business, you want to be able to talk to that too. Because if you're doing projects that don't really align with your business just to get the money, there's going to be a disconnect there. So you do want to think about that as well. All right. And a big piece. So for all the for-profit uh, participants here today, partnerships is what is going to unlock the money for you. And that is what helped to unlock the money for us. We were able to partner with various organizations and when we're going for, like, say, the Youth Opportunities Fund, even though we are a for-profit, we were able to put together a grassroots organization in order. So we took an element of what the business did, which was the youth entrepreneurship piece, pulled it out, partnered with an organization that works with youth, and then we were able to go in and do the application together. So that partnership is what got us our first funding, and now we don't do anything without partners. So you'll see we have a full slide of partners that we work with. So think about, especially if you're a for-profit company, what could you add to a nonprofit that has the same mission, aligns with you, but that, that stops you from having to become a nonprofit. And a lot of times we're already running our businesses, we don't have time to be running a nonprofit as well. So just take your expertise and partner with a nonprofit and then they'd be able to lead grant applications. And so you could find things that you're able to execute, bring it to your partner and they'd be able to submit it for you, which also saves you on like having to become an expert grant writer because a lot of times nonprofit organizations already have in-house grant writers or at least people that they contract to get it done. So you could just leverage that and you don't have to. And then when they ask you all these questions, you already have your blueprint done. So you can send them all the answers that they would need from you for the application. And it's really, it unlocks a lot more opportunities because you're able to get applications in really quickly. All right. Uh, so this just talks about anticipated sources. So different places you might get money from. And you'll notice that so you could talk about in-kind contributions but you'll notice that this blueprint is pretty dense and this is actually modeled from one of the federal applications so federal grants i've seen are the most tedious ones to apply for our uh, provincial is up there too but once you go through it once and this is typically the format it's like the most difficult type of grant that you would see so all the other grants, especially the ones that I'm going to show you uh, right now, 
they're much easier to go through than a federal grant. So do the most difficult thing. Well, I kind of forced you to, but your blueprint forces you to do kind of a more difficult application for yourself. And then you'll see that the other applications that you find will be a lot easier to manage. And let me see. So this gives you an example of different types of costs that you can put into grant applications. So when you're doing your initial project, you, sh you should be able to break down exactly how much money you need. I find that a lot of times when clients are going for grants, they're just going for whatever's available and then kind of reverse engineering. Oh, if I get 50K, then this is what I would do with it. You want to do that in reverse. So figure out exactly how much money it is that you need. And then that's what you're going to be able to put into the application. And also it opens you up to unsolicited um, proposals. So if you know what it takes to execute your program, you don't have to wait for somebody to open a funding opportunity and put out the application. And then it's really competitive because everybody's going for it. You can actually find either foundations, corporations, or even other nonprofits that have funding to present them what you're capable of doing. So this project, you could put it together as your own proposal and send it to uh, different entities that have money as an unsolicited proposal to say, hey, I've been running my business for X amount of years. I've been running this uh, program in the community. I feel like we can execute and have this type of impact. It would cost this amount and you can submit that proposal and get additional funding. And that's been something that we've I feel leaned on more is not just waiting for applications to open, but actually finding people that have money and that their mission aligns or their values align with what we do and sending them those proposals that we put together. But the previous proposals that we wrote is what helped us create the proposal we can now send unsolicited to people. So keep that in mind and then we'll break down. So the budget, we would have to do like another full session on breaking down the budget. But if you come to one of the Wednesday sessions, we usually have a specific day that talks to how to complete your budget. And again, really quickly, your budget needs to tell the story of how you're going to execute uh, the project. And so a lot of times we're trying to front load it just to get money to pay ourselves and figure out how to you know, you don't want to use grants to keep the lights on. Grants are typically used to amplify what you're already doing and the budget needs to reflect that. And then the budget leads into the work plan. So you've now identified all the things that you need to spend money on to get done. You now have to identify what milestones you need to hit at what times in order to execute this program that you're talking about. So I, I, it's a lot and that's where we typically need to go step by step to make sure that it's done well. But if you get it out of your mind and into this blueprint, and it could be just bullet points, it doesn't have to be perfect, uh, grant writer, language, uh, super academic, just get it out of your head and onto paper. And then you could work with somebody that is a grant writer or an organization that has people that could support you and sit down with you and say, hey, let me know what you've written and edit it for you. All that additional support is already out there. So just get your ideas onto this paper and then you can work with somebody to make it a lot better. All right, so this talks a bit more to the funding. Yeah, so that's the funding. All right, so let me know if there's any specific questions about the blueprint itself. Otherwise you do have a copy of it. Feel free to go through it at your leisure and I will get to the next section of what is available. So let me just pause real quick just to check. Were there any questions? I don't want to go too fast. Let's see, does anyone have any specific questions that you would like to drop into the chat? Or if you'd like to raise your hand, we could take like a couple. But I think we're okay for right now. All right, solid. And so like I said, you have homework today and your homework is the BBPA Bates program. So for those, I'm, I would be shocked if nobody knows about this, but just in case this is your first time hearing about the Bates program, it 
was put together by the BBPA and it helps you get support and resources to pay for services that you need for your business. Oh, actually this is the actual application. Let me go to the program just to show you what types of support you're able to get. All right, so you'll see this array of different business services you'd be able to get support to get your business plan done, uh, get your accounting and bookkeeping up to date, uh, get your business registered. And even you'll see here as we're talking, grant writing and submissions. So you can sign up for BAIDS to get resources to help you get more money. <laughs> so now if you're able to get uh, connected with a service provider like myself or the Empower for X team to help you with your grant writing, we can help you research and get those applications in to unlock additional money for your organization and your business. But again, you'll see you can get a marketing support, so that'd be strategy. I'm not sure if that includes implementation of marketing strategies, but at minimum, you can get help with creating a marketing strategy. And again, help with staffing, that's probably more HR management and your operations. So all that to say, oh, let me put this link in the chat as well, because not waste time and get your application in. All right. So this is the application for Bades. So you can follow along as I go through. And again, this is where if you had the blueprint, you're just copy and pasting. So it might take you a bit of time to go through and answer the questions. But again, first name, last name, company name, all this contact info is pretty standard. You would check mark which services that you actually want to get done. So let's say you want to get accounting and a business plan. Somebody asked about business plan. So you can get that done. I actually don't see grant writing. So you might have to put other and then grant writing from Ryan because I need the bag. And then the rest is more just explaining about your organization. So what type of business, is it unregistered, registered, uh, years in business, revenue, you could talk about your top five customers. So this is important. So out of all the questions, this one and your main competitors is probably where you'd spend a bit of time. Understanding who your best customers are is really important because those are the ones that you wanna target with your marketing strategy. So you'll see, if you don't know who your best customers are, you need to find out. So that might be an exercise that you do just before starting the application. But if you have an idea of customers in the past that have been your gold clients, those should become your avatar to find more people like them. So that would help you answer this question and explaining what makes you different. So now these customers are coming to you, why aren't they going to your competitors? So these two questions are really important. And again, take these answers and then go back to your blueprint. And I'm gonna edit this to put it in a better place. But you update your blueprint with the answers. So hold on, go to the bottom. Okay, new section. Yeah, so any questions that you see that are new, you always want to continue to update your blueprint so that if you see that question again, you have it somewhere safe. All right. So what was the other one? Uh, why are they doing this? So copy and paste it into your document, answer the questions in your Google document, do not just answer them into the application because if you answer them in the application and submit, a lot of times you don't get a copy of your submission. So now that amazing answer that you wrote, it's gone. And a lot of times you can't recall it. So do the writing for like paragraph type answers in your blueprints so that you always have that answer when you're going forward. 
and then it touches on like human resources. Uh, what are you currently doing with your marketing? And of course, why did you choose this type of marketing? And accounting, so asking about your annual expenses. So up top, it asked about your revenue. In the accounting section, it is asking about your actual expenses. And then it's important to know how these expenses are broken down, but don't feel bad if you're not sure. The person that you get connected to when they're doing their assessment would probably uh, suggest somebody to coach you on like the op full operations of your business. And yeah, so these are pretty straightforward. How do you measure financial success? And then more contacts. How many years do you plan in advance for your company? That is a good question. And if you have a business plan. If you don't have a business plan, that should be one of the first services that you get from the Bates program. All right, so that is one that is available right now. The link is in the chat. So your homework is to get this one done today. Even you can start it now. Like what I'm gonna say next is you can come back and watch it later. But this application is something that you should get done right now without excuse. And we are here to support, but I feel it's pretty straightforward. Hold on. I didn't observe. So the next one that I want to show you is I'm not sure if you saw the announcement, but Digital Main Street got renewed. So they got a million dollars from the federal, no, from the provincial government from Ontario to run Digital Main Street again. So it started out as a digital, oh my gosh, you could create a digital transformation plan. So you would be able to complete your onboarding where they would audit like your online presence. And then you would watch uh, customized visit videos about uh, digital marketing to get you comfortable with different uh, elements. And then you would create your own uh, digital plan, like digital marketing plan, and they would give you $2,500 to execute that plan. And now it shifted to shop here. Actually, is it up here? So shop here was them connecting you with uh, a youth e-commerce specialist or website specialist that would help your business get online by building you a Shopify store. So both of those programs now got renewed. And so you're gonna be able to get the $2,500 again and also get connected with a youth tech expert to build your Shopify store. So if you haven't gone through Digital Main Street, I will also put this into the chat so that you can sign up. And again, start filling out. All right, and I just see a question. If we already applied, when will we find out about the decision? I know it took a bit of time to do the initial assessments, but the next phase of actually pairing you with a service provider should launch pretty soon. So I'm sure we could check with um, BBB email programs at bbpa.org. You can check to see the status of your application, but I'm sure it would be, I'm hoping this month because a lot of grants are coming down the pipe and not just digital Main Street. you'll see. Oh, sorry, I got distracted. Did I put it into the chat? Yes, you put in the digitalmainstreet.ca. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So the next one that is due August the 20th is the CLAR Black Lead Business Grants Program. So this one, if you don't know about CLAR, they were created, I think, mid to late last year to be able to support the BIPOC community. This is one of their initial programs that is in partnership with the Black Opportunity Fund and Pitch Better, funded by Facebook Canada. So they are giving grants from between 2,500 to 10,000. And we actually did a full webinar walkthrough of this grant. So I will put that link into the chat so you can watch it at your leisure. So yes, uh, if you wanna see every single question, I know we don't have time today, but every single question we went through, it actually filled out the grant. So you'll see kind of how I was answering questions and also how I used the blueprint to just pull questions that I've already answered that were similar into the new application and to get it done a lot quicker. 
So just before we wrap up, I wanted to tell you about a couple others that are available right now. All right, so the Investment Readiness Program and the Toronto Enterprise Fund should be launched really shortly. You'll see that uh, the Investment Readiness Program I'm a big fan of because the government created a pool of money called the Social Finance Fund, which was $755 million to, well, I think it was initially 800 million, but then they were gonna invest that into social enterprise. They realized a lot of social enterprises weren't ready for the investment. So they created a grant program. So they took 50 million to put into the investment readiness program. So that program now helped nonprofits start their own social enterprises or help them get funding to enhance their social enterprise and also for-profit companies to also start thinking about social enterprise or those that were already running social enterprises to help get them money to fine tune their operations to get them ready for investment. So it, I believe it was a good success and now they renewed it. So they got 50 more million dollars. And so that next round of funding should be announced shortly. I think it was supposed to be announced last month. So it should be this month, August that they're gonna announce it. And the Toronto Enterprise Fund, again, for social enterprises that consider themselves employment social enterprises. So that means you're hiring from a disadvantaged group in the community and your business is still generating profit, but you're also having a, a very specific hiring practice. So they're gonna be launching their program in fall. So as it renews, as the IRP renews and Toronto Enterprise Fund comes out, I'll definitely keep you in the loop. Uh, these two, I'll, I think I'll give the team these uh, links so that we can share it with everybody that was on the call. Uh, the Benefits Finder is an excellent tool that the federal government has so that you can just plug in answers to their questions and it shows you all the different grants, subsidies, uh, like uh, resources. It has a whole list of things that you'd qualify for. So that benefits finder i'll grab the link actually if i click it i think it should take me there yes i tend to forget things so let me just grab it right now put it into the chat so you have it all right and really quickly again for those that need assistance with their grant writing I always feel like having a person alongside you is better than trying to figure out everything on your own. We have a boutique firm that works with clients and really supports you in first getting that grant blueprint done because with the blueprint, now you could really go after a lot of grants that you might've gotten stuck with before. I exist to make sure that the community wins, our organizations exist to make sure that you win, whether you're an executive director or a CEO, we want to make sure that you get the support that you need. So please reach out. If um, you did want to be part of our Grant Writer University, right now it's going to be going up in September. So it's 297, and this helps you get your grant blueprint done. And also every Friday, we get like the inside scoop with myself. At one o'clock, we work with clients just on whatever grants that they have and answering questions and going through new grants. So it's something to consider if you don't want to figure this out on your own, but you can't afford uh, a full-blown grant writer to outsource it. Come to our university, learn about uh, getting your blueprint done with our help, and also we'll be able to meet every Friday to coach you along the way. Oh, this looks redundant. So my name is Ryan Knight. I am excited to start working with you. I really truly hope that this was informative and will help you position yourself in front of the flow of money. If you were adding it all up, the amount of funds that are being distributed is over a hundred million dollars. So the money is there. It's just, are we in the right position to get the money? And I want to help get you in that right position. So please reach out. My number is there. Add me to WhatsApp and send me a message. I apologize if I don't answer phone calls right away, but I'm pretty good with text messages and WhatsApp. And so, yeah, we are open for questions.
Thank you, Ryan. Uh, I mean, you lit the chat up. So everyone make sure you <laughs> grab the, all of the resources um, that Ryan dropped in there. And please, I, I captured some questions that you originally asked, but if you have more questions or want to raise your hand, mm -hmm. now is the time to do so. So I'm gonna work from the bottom and go up because I think some things were applying to what you were just talking about. So um, there was a question from Beverly and Beverly you might have to come off. Um, she was saying, does that apply to startups that want to hire from a disadvantaged group? So Beverly, yes. are you there? Oh, go ahead, Ryan, if you're ready. It does. So the Employment Social Enterprise grant that the Toronto uh, Enterprise Fund has, that's exactly what it's for. So if you're hiring from a disadvantaged group, you'd be considered an employment social enterprise and they give funding for that. So there's two stages of their funding. Uh, the initial 10,000 is for getting your business plan and your facility study done. So if you're a startup, you're in perfect position. And then their next phase is up to 100,000 over three years to help you launch your concept and for operating the business. Thank you. And let me continue to go up. There was a question from Craig. Um, and Craig, also, I see your question of wanting Ryan's contact information. So if you can multitask Ryan and drop that, sure thing. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> so another question from Craig, um, how do we sign up for correspondence from the ACBN? Is there an email list mm -hmm. or periodic Zoom calls? Yes, so we have periodic Zoom calls every other Wednesday. Oh, actually, I will put that in the chat so you can sign. It's with webinars.brianoneal.com. So every other Wednesday, we do a session about what grants are out there. And typically, I would do a full walkthrough of like, let's say we did the American Express grant, we've done the CLAR grant, we did the BBPA Bates grant before, uh, we've done the Federal Canada Digital Adoption Program. So anything that we find that we can qualify for, we try to make sure that we understand it and get that application in. So that's every other Wednesday. Excellent. This is a question from Michaela. Is the mm -hmm. Black Entrepreneurship Fund grant already, um, has it already passed? No, so the one with CLAR is due August the 20th. And let me grab that link. I don't think I shared that one. So CLAR, that program is due August 20th. And yeah, BBPA does not have a deadline. Excellent. Thank you. Let me go up. There's a question. O'Neill Miller, I don't know if you're still there. We had a question about grants being located, but I think you were dropping dropping them in the chat. So O'Neill, if you're there and there was one in particular that you had a question about, um, feel free to unmute yourself and let us know which one that may have been. I'll give you a quick moment. I, I was just looking for the um, the actual blank, the uh, blank template, and he, he sent that link, so I got that. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Let's right. see. And so a prize, while you're looking for the next question, because you guys say to Lynn, I have two surprises for you. So one is the actual spreadsheet that I use to keep track of all grants that I find. We call it the funding options for small business. So if you don't already have this spreadsheet, this is what will keep you in the know. And I try my best to really keep it up to date but put this into chat. And the second surprise is, and you have to be here to get it. So the Youth Opportunities Fund opened up their expression of interest again. So that is due, I believe, September 29th. So in the chat, I'm actually going to put in the grant that we got funded for in 2016. So you can get an idea of what kind of answers they're looking for. And again, that was like 2016, but it'll prepare you for what it would look like. So you'd be able to look through what we submitted. And again, if you had questions about it, but you could only get this because you're here. So don't share with anybody. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. But that is what we um, submitted back then. 
and it's been a good time. So excellent, <laughs> thank you. You're you're going in and out, but we we got it that you put gifts in there, so everybody grab <laughs> your gifts, okay? Trust me. Grab your gifts in there, okay? And his contact information is in there as well. Um, mm-hmm. and they're saying thank you. So thank you for bringing gifts for us today. That was such a nice surprise. Hey, my pleasure. <laughs> all right excellent excellent let me see anybody else have any questions that they want to ask live i believe i got everything from the chat but please raise your hand at this time and i can call on you and you can ask the question let's see okay beverly go right ahead um thank you for all that information Ryan. that was amazing really really helpful what I was wondering was whether or not when it comes to grants, is there a tendency to favor businesses that's already pre-existing or startups um, in the same category? That is a good question because a lot of times there's specific grants for businesses that are registered. There's very few for those that are unregistered. So typically they want to see a bit of track record to say, hey, what have you been doing up to this point? Uh, the American Express one, they were asking for, hey, have you gotten funding before? Like, what, what's your track record, pretty much? So they definitely give you more points if you can show track record. If the grant is for startups specifically, something similar to uh, the startup, the, no, what is it? Startup Plus? Starter Plus program that the, um, the different cities, small business organizations were doing. Those ones are for startups. So if you have too much track record, they'd be like, you're kind of too far advanced for this program. So really looking at the criteria and what type of entrepreneurs are looking to support would let you know if that experience would give you more points or they're just really trying to help uh, startups. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the question, Beverly. And let's see, Shim? Hi, how are you? Hey, how are you? Yeah, not too bad. Um, so that touched base a little bit on what I was about to ask was um, about startups. Like, <clears throat> if you know starting your business, and like, are there other grants available for people that I know looking to start their business from the ground? Yeah, starting from the ground up, it's best to plug into. Uh, one of the incubators. So Sheridan College, they have the EDGE program. If you're starting up, they have a lot more resources to help you hit those initial milestones that would then get you ready to get the grants or the type of capital that you're looking for. So typically there's not a lot of grants to help with startups, but like the Toronto Enterprise Fund is one of the few that I've seen that actually gives you money to do your business plan and gives you money to do a feasibility study. So those are few, but there are some out there like that one that if you're a true startup, but typically tapping into the uh, institution resources. So uh, Sheridan Edge has it, Ryerson DMZ has a new one, the uh, Black Innovation Fellowship, but that's more for tech companies. But if you're a startup, you can go through like their whole online program, get to a point that your business has traction, possibly an MVP, and then plug into their fellowship. That, uh, I forget what it's like Sandbox, something else. And there's three levels. So you can get in at the Sandbox and then work your way up. Thank you for that question. So I'm going to take the, um, I'm going to ask a question from Shantae that was in the chat that I saw. And then Martha, I'm going to let you wrap it up with your question live. So Shantae's question is, what is the likelihood of receiving a grant if you are a very small startup for-profit business? Used, I used to say it was very low, but you have to shift your perspective for going after grants. When you're first going after initial grants, don't expect to get it. So that's where I say don't uh, base your balance sheet on getting a grant or your operations of your business on getting a grant because it takes a few no's in order to understand exactly what the funders are looking for. It took us three tries to get the Youth Opportunities Fund, but then once we got it, it exponentially grew our youth program. But it was getting the initial no that you get the feedback to say, okay, what what was wrong with what we put in? 
and then they give you the ad, like they tell you exactly what they're looking for. So it was we had initially put in too much. We we're like, oh, we can do all these amazing things if you give us the money. We will transform the education system. But they're like, yeah, we're not really interested in uh, the systems change because that's a different stream. The stream that we were applying for had a specific uh, focus. So now you can say, okay, we stripped away everything that they weren't looking for put together a package that they said they're looking for. So now you're using their own words in the application and then it was successful. So don't be afraid of, so don't rely on grants and also use getting no's from your applications to strengthen what your project actually is supposed to do. But uh, yeah, grants are super competitive. So it, get as much support as you can. Once it's done, get it to people like me or other people at Empowered for X or even BBPA. Again, get the Bades grant to get additional support so that you don't just submit something on your own with uh, your own knowledge. Get people to look at it and help you with it. Thank you. Thanks for the question, Shante. And Martha, mm -hmm. go right ahead. What's your question? Um, first, I wanted to say thank you so much for all the information that was provided. It was really, really helpful. Um, I've learned a lot so far. Um, there's a lot of programs and organizations that you mentioned, Ryan, that are like in the Toronto area. For example, the program that helps startups that you mentioned when you were answering a question, uh, as well as um, your organization, uh, Empowered for X. Uh, my question was, do these two well, the organization and the program that I just mentioned, do they focus specifically with businesses and organizations that are only in Toronto or do they have a wider reach? Um, I'm asking because specifically for myself, um, I live in Montreal, so my organization and our activities are mostly in Montreal. Excellent. So again, being able to shift to virtual did expand our reach. So I know Empowered for X, when we do our programming, we're getting people right across Canada and even into the US and from Africa, a couple of people were on from Nigeria. So we can definitely deliver programs. And again, in Montreal, there's another great organization called One Full Circle. So if you don't know One Full Circle, I would connect with them because they're kind of like our mirror, like they do similar work, but they are actually based in Montreal and bilingual. So I would connect you with them, but any of the things that we're doing, a lot of it's on online right now, so you can tap in. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yes, my pleasure. Thank you, Martha. And thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you for bringing all of your knowledge, your information, and your resources and your gifts today. I, I love when people just bring me unexpected gifts. I don't know if anyone else loves that. <laughs> I sure do. As always, um, remember to join us on every Thursday um, and we'll bring more special guests for you and also join us on Wednesday so day before on Wednesday ask a professional um, they'll have the topic of getting to know the Caribbean Counselor Corps part two and that's from 12 to 1 on Wednesday on August the 11th okay so thank you all for joining us today I do have one request if possible before you go while I play some music Write in the chat how you found out about us. I want to know if you came in from Saw IG, Facebook, Eventbrite, um, our email list. Please write in the chat how you're hearing about this information so we make sure we continue to get out for you. Oh, Twitter, of course. Let's not forget Twitter, LinkedIn, <laughs> all of those. Let us know where you are finding us, okay? Tell a friend to tell a friend. We'll see you next time. And thank you once again, Ryan. It's been a pleasure um, having you today. All right, so thank you everyone for coming. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.